All right. In this video, we are going to actually talk about how to create a SQL queries. Although we're not actually going to have to type in a ton of SQL ourselves probably, but it, it is an option for you to do a lot of SQL typing now that you know how to do it. However, we'll also be talking about some of the uh, query building wizard stuff that allows you to just you do it with your mouse, which is very helpful. So this is the whole process of actually creating a SQL uh, query and then integrating it into your application. Um, I'll be covering the rest of the focus section from uh, this chapter. So uh, sections four through five, sorry, two through five of um, chapter 12 in the focus part of it. All right, so this is the application that I'm going to be working with for this particular video. It actually is the um, Oscars winner's data uh, set that I had been talking about in the previous video. So you can actually see all the data right here. But if I exit out of here, uh, let's say we want to start building up some queries so we don't have to look at all of these fields or all of these rows at the same time. You can see, for example, right here, I have this uh, display um, thing where maybe I want to only display a record for a particular year. So the end goal of this is I want to be able to type in the year that I want to display and then hit this display button and then only the record for that year shows. So if I want to do that, then I'll need to do some work with queries in order to make it happen. So let's actually talk about how to do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to this uh, .xsd file for the uh, data set that we have. This is known as the um, schema file for the data set. Kind of defines how the data set behaves and all that and what queries it's actually able to, uh, you know, we're, we're able to define for it. So what I want to do is uh, double click this right here and this will take us to the familiar data set designer window that we have seen before. And what I want to do is I want to go to this table adapter name right here. For this project, it's called the winner's table adapter, but it might be different in other projects depending on the name of the table that this data set came from. So what I want to do is go to the name of the table adapter. It will be table name table adapter uh, every time. And then I'll right click on it and then go to add right here. And this will give me some options, but what I want to do is add a query. So actually down here, this fill comma get data, this actually is a query as well. You can actually see it down here under the properties. Um, fill, oh, fill is in and of itself a query and you can get it, uh, you can access that query by calling the get data um, method of the table adapter in your code. So that's, um, that actually is a query already. It is a query that just returns, or that, that uh, shows all of the fields and all of the records. It is our very basic um, prompt right here, which you can actually kind of see if I can, there we go. Just a very basic select statement that I showed off before. It just, that simple um, SQL statement right there. And you can actually change that command text right, you know, very easily. You can change the method name as well and to actually, you know, fill data into the table and also uh, get data out of the table, but we're not really going to worry about that right now. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do if we want to get a new query is I will uh, right click, um, add query like this. Oh, yeah, add. Query. It will either be like add uh, with a submenu that says query right here, or if you click in just the wrong spot, it will just say add query. Either one is totally fine. You just add the query like this. And this takes up the query uh, configuration wizard for the table adapter. And really quick, I want to specify that the, the table adapter is what gets this query. 
because if you remember from last chapter, the table adapter handles passing data between the data set and the application. So when you're querying, uh, you're, you're defining a method for the table adapter that tells the table adapter how to get data from the data set in order to give it to you. That's what that um, query uh, really is. It's a method of the table adapter. You access that query through the table adapter's method, and then the table adapter will handle the requests to the actual data set and then give you data back and so on. So anyway, that's how you get to the table adapter query configuration wizard, which is where we're actually going to start defining our query. All right, so once we're here, um, what you always want to do right now is select this use SQL statements. Uh, we don't need to worry about the other options at the moment. Uh, you also only, at, you know, at this time, you only want to worry about the select which returns rows. We're also not going to worry about these other statements as well. So just select which returns rows up here. Um, so we're just worrying about querying. We don't really worry about updating or deleting or inserting or anything like that. Uh, and then you'll end up at this specify a SQL select statement. Now, there are two ways that you can go about actually defining your query at this point. Uh, you can type it in manually using the SQL stuff that we talked about in the previous video. So just your select statement work. So let's say I want to just get the year and the best picture like this uh, from dbo.winners. Uh, where year is greater than or equal to 2016. I could do that if I wanted to, and that would be totally fine. Now, if we don't want to worry about actually messing with SQL like this, we can instead go to the uh, Query Builder, which will um, pop up oh, on my other monitor. There we go. There we go. Okay. My computer's being a little bit persnickety today, but I'll rearrange some things. So what we have are some of these views. Um, show This shows like the all the metadata and stuff for the uh, actual table itself. We have, so, you know, all the fields, the table that they come from, uh, whether or not we want to include them in the output, all that kind of stuff. Um, we have the actual uh, view of the winner's table itself, which, you know, we've seen some of this stuff before. Uh, we can f filter out different um, columns, or yeah, different fields like this, or we can filter them out here. Uh, we can also work with the SQL um, select statement down here if we wanted to. Uh, move this up a little bit as well. But what's really nice about this is that it makes it really easy for us to just easily build this select statement where we can say control the sort type, the sort order, and filter out certain records based on certain things. So sort type and sort order is going to uh, actually correspond to the order by clause of our uh, SQL select statement. And filter here is going to uh, correspond to the where clause of our select statement. So if we want to do a where clause, we could just type in the conditional under where, you know, like un under the uh, where clause. And that's the same thing as typing out where condition, right? If we want to have a particular ordering, then we can just uh, specify that here, and that's the same thing as typing out order by on this uh, part of the query builder. All right, so if I just want um, all of these records from the year 2016 or later, um, what I can do is under filter for this uh, year uh, column right here, under filter, I can say greater than or equal to 2016. This is equivalent of having the where condition year greater than or equal to 2016. So you don't even need to um, actually have the field here at all. 
you can just type in the uh, condition that directly corresponds to the uh, year field. And when I click out of that, this uh, where part updates, and now we have year greater than or equal to 2016. And if I want to test the query to make sure that I'm getting the data that I expect out of it, I can click execute query, and we'll actually uh, show me all of the data that would be returned if I were to actually, you know, execute that query in my code. And as you can see, this shows all of the years um, past uh, 2016, or, you know, 2016 and after. So that is really neat. Now, you can also chain things together with um, and right here. If I wanted to say that the year was greater than or equal to 2016 and it has uh, the letter A in it, um, what I could do, uh, and the, sorry, the best picture winner has the letter A in it, what I could do is come down to picture here, specify um, like, uh, let's see, it would be percent A percent as a character string like that. Uh, you'll get this notice that the query has changed, so I will execute the query again. And now we get all of the years after 2016 where the letter A has actually, um, it actually shows up in here somewhere. So that's pretty neat. Um, and we can see that it's uh, doing both uh, after 2016 and having the letter A in it because, you know, both of these show up in the where uh, part of the, um, you know, but both of these show up in the where clause as conditions, but I could also show off, like, we can see that everything before 2016 was excluded if I just change the filter real quick and then execute the new query and we see all these results from before 2016 that didn't show up at all because of this filter right here. So if you need to do, uh, if you need to chain a couple of conditions together, you're using and uh, from different uh, fields like this, that's how you would do that. All right, so now let's suppose I was trying to get the, um, you know, the, the year that Argo won best picture. Uh, what I could do is I could uh, start getting rid of things, of course. Um, wait, no, I do want best picture, but I can get rid of animated, I can get rid of actress and actor like this. We have the year and the picture, and under the filter I can say equals um, Argo. And when I execute the query, that gives me the year 2013 and the year and the picture Argo, the best picture Argo. Note, however, I don't actually have to include the best picture name. I can just get the year out of it, even though the picture itself um, is being used as a filter. Isn't that neat? So I don't have to actually just include year and picture if I just care about the year, but I'm filtering based on the picture like that. Um, that's not necessary. So it's a cool uh, tool you can use there. All right, so now I'm going to um, show off the example where I was uh, giving back the animated best picture winners uh, from 2010 or 2020. So it was only the two movies, uh, but also sorted alphabetically, right? So what we can do here is first I'm going to deselect actor, actress, and picture because we don't really care about that. We only care about the animated best picture and the year. Of uh, the filter for the year, I wanted to give me back the uh, record from 2010 and the record from 2020, which means that each record should either be 2010 or 2020. So I'll do um, equal sign space 2010 space or space equal sign space 2020. Yeah, 2020, just like that. And it's important you do it in that uh, way where you have those spaces between the equal sign and the 2010 
and the space between 2010 and or and the space between or and equal sign and the space between equal sign and 2020. Um, I'll put that filter in right now and we'll see that it works just like that, which is great. If you don't put the equals the space in between the equal sign and the numbers, um, oh, well, it was nice enough to uh, correct it for me this time. Uh, in the past, I ran into some issues when I was doing something like equal sign 2010, no space in between them, or space uh, equal sign 2020. Oh, no, I fixed it this time, so I had a mysterious SQL error come up that I don't know where it came from. Regardless, uh, equals 2010 or equals 2020 will get converted to year equals 2010 or year equals 2020 under the where column right here, so they're smart about it, which is really cool. And then that's what the uh, result of executing the query is. But now if I want to actually um, sort by uh, the name reverse alphabetically, that'll be a little bit different. So I can go over to animated right here. I can go to sort type. There's this drop down box right here. Uh, you can see ascending, descending, and unsorted. Uh, if we're trying to sort it descending, you would just say descending like this. Um, and that would give it, well, descending, I guess, because, you know, the letter U comes after the letter T uh, in the alphabet. So that is descending. If I wanted to sort it ascending, uh, and now, oh. I never executed the query. Okay, so this is what it looks like sorting ascending alphabetically by the animated field. Um, get Toy Story 4 and up right here, the year 2020 before the year 2010. I sorted it descending, and then I execute the query. Then it gets sorted in reverse alphabetical order, like that. So I'll leave that as ascending. Now, you don't just have to put or right here, you could also put and. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show everything in the 2010s. So everything where the year starts with 201 blank. I can say greater than or equal to 2010 uh, and less than 2020 and execute the query. And now this is all of the animated uh, winners, animated best picture winners sorted in ascending alphabetical order by the name of the, um, by the name of that movie. Now you'll see the sort order right here and it doesn't come into play too often um, because I don't believe there are many repeated values. Uh, cha -cha -cha. Oh, let me get rid of this filter. I just want to see all of the, um, you know, we're going to just do some experimentation right here. So I'll change this back to unsorted for actor. I'll sort it by ascending just to see if there's any duplicates. Oh, Daniel Day Lewis right here. Perfect. Um, So what happens here, let me see if there's another repeat as well, uh, maybe in actress as well. Nope. Okay, well, Daniel Day-Lewis is the only repeated value in this entire table. What happens right here is that we see that there are two Daniel Day-Lewis values, but we're asking it to sort by ascending. So which Daniel Day-Lewis comes first uh, if we're sorting by actor ascending? Um, well, in this case, by default, visual... Um, all right, sorry. The uh, SQL result has decided to say, okay, between these two Daniel Day Lewis's, we'll sort them by the primary key value. So whichever the primary key value comes first uh, in this record, that's the record that we will show first. So because 2008 is smaller than 2013, uh, it chooses 2008 first and puts the 2008 Daniel Day Lewis before the 2013 Daniel Day Lewis. It's sort of like a backup sorting method or we also have this sort order idea, which is essentially this behavior right here is as if I said that it's also sorted by the year as setting, but the sort order is two. This two sort order right here is essentially that backup sort order. If there's a tie in sort order one, if there's if there are two actor names that are the same, then we re resort to sort order two 
to then s resolve that tie. And if there's a tie in here as well, then we would maybe have a sort order three or a sort order four or something like that. But it doesn't, you know, we don't actually have to specify that we're sorting by the year unless we're sorting by the year descending. Actually, I could do that. We're sorted by the year uh, descending as sort order two and then execute that query. Now we see that the, um, uh, let's see. Actually, no, that's interesting. It doesn't go descending by the year there. What happens if I do, um, you know, sometimes things uh, surprise you, right? Neil Day Lewis. Ah, okay, so the actress here is descending. Oh, whoops. Apologies for that. The, uh, like the actress ascending. No, that doesn't change it either. You know what? It might be because the year is... No. Oh, you know what it is? That's funny. There's a space right here instead of a... Um... That's why. That's why. Because there's a typo in the cell. If I execute the query, um... Oh, well, I can't fix that. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um, but if this was right, if this was correct, where there's a space right here and a hyphen right there, um, then if I had sort order one, sort order two, um, 2013 Daniel Day-Lewis would come before 2008 Daniel Day-Lewis. Uh, because... It would see the tie in the two Daniel D. Lewis's that should be there, although it's not really because of the difference between this hyphen and space versus this space and hyphen, right? But it would see the tie and then say, okay, I'm going to go to my backup, and now I need to uh, sort between Jennifer Lawrence and Marion uh, Cotillard. Uh, I need to sort between the two and then put Jennifer Lawrence up top, which means that 2013 goes above 2008. So that's why none of that was actually working because of the misspelling of Daniel Day-Lewis, but that's what the sort order does. And anyway, that's how a uh, sort order works in the query builder. And then of course, if I wanted to do, um, let's say filter back, I'll put back uh, years greater than 2010 and uh, less than 2020. Then yeah, that's how you can kind of string all those together. Now, the previous queries that I have just shown off had um, had me matching specific values, right? The the uh, conditions were all working with specific year numbers or specific names or even like a specific pattern, uh, but that's still like a specific value in and of itself. But we can actually ask users to give us values for our queries using something known as a parameter query. And you might have actually gotten a hint of that possibly being possible with the application that I showed off where it had that dialog box, or not dialog box, but it had the text box to allow the user to select a specific year and then get records from that year, right? Well, that's what we're actually going to try to implement. So we're going to use parameter queries, which are like uh, parameters for functions. Um, it, it, you, uh, you put a pre um, parameter marker in place of a criterion's value uh, so rather than actually saying year is equal to 2016, you could have some year equals and then like a parameter marker, which is a little bit like a variable. Um, and then the application will fill in a uh, quote unquote argument value for that uh, parameter query. So it will um, essentially pass in an argument that will get substituted in place of that parameter marker. Uh, it's not, it's not like an actual variable that you're working with, but it kind of functions essentially like a variable, which is really helpful. But you give a quote-unquote argument value for that parameter query, 
And your application might be giving that based on the user value, like what we saw with the GUI, where the user could type in a year and try to get the record from that year. So that's what we're thinking about here with parameter queries. So here's an example of how you might use a um, parameter query. So we have this parameter marker at picture right here. That is the parameter marker that uh, demonstrates where user input is going to go, or at least where the, uh, the input for this query is going to go. So we're, we're selecting uh, all the fields from the winner's table where um, the picture field equals whatever value is put into at picture. Um, so I could type in Argo right here, and this will select all of the records where the best picture winner was Argo, which would just be the, the one record. Here's another one, select all the records where the year is greater than or equal to at year, the user, or the um, parameter marker at year right there. If I, I give 2016 as the value for this, and it will select all the years where the year is greater than or equal to 2016. I could even have multiple parameter markers inside of the same condition right here, uh, where let's say where year is greater than or equal to um, at year start and uh, year is less than or equal to at year end, like that. All right, so here is how you would insert a parameter query in the query builder like this. Um, if I'm trying to get the particular year, for example, I could um, go to the filter and say equals at year, like that. Um, that shows up in the uh, SQL code right here. When you hit execute query, you get this pop-up that asks you to put a value for the parameters. Uh, so this is where I would put something like um, 2019 or something like that. And this would give me equals uh, 2019. You know, the, the record uh, for the year 2019. You could even do greater than or equal to. Um, execute the query, I'll give it 2019 again. That gives me everything after 2019. Uh, I'll do what I showed off before, greater than or equal to year start, uh, and less than, I'll just do a strictly less than uh, at year end, like this. Um, so year start will be 2010, year end will be 2020, but I did a less than, strictly less than there, so it won't actually include 2020, uh, and that gives us the decade from 2010 the, the 2010s decade, just like that. So these parameter queries are really helpful because this allows us to sort of get an in to like actually, it, it gives us like a, a place where we can actually control what data is being returned from the query outside of just the query builder, which is going to be really helpful. So now I've been messing with these queries a lot, but I haven't actually, you know, saved them and done anything with it. So when we're still in the query builder like that, we haven't actually saved the query. It's still like in the experimentation phase. So we have to fully save it and then finish building it and then invoke from the code, like invoke it from the code in order to use it in our applications. Uh, so when we do this, uh, when we actually go through the process of saving everything, it associates our select queries with table adapter methods. It, it creates new methods for the table adapter me uh, object. And then those custom methods are, you know, like they're, they're created for that object and then we can actually use them within our applications. All right, so I'm back in the same query builder. Uh, I've just put the year filter back to equals at year. Um, and I'll execute the query to make sure it works right. So I will type in uh, 2009, let's say. And this correctly gives us just the record, um, just the record for the year 2009. So once we are comfortable with that, um, what I'm going to do is hit OK. And we can double check to make sure that the SQL looks right here, which it should. And yeah, that's going to be what uh, query we're going to actually use 
for our um, application here in order for the user to get the uh, get the year, you know, specify the year that they want to look at. All right, so once we have actually built our query, um, I'm going to go to next, and this allows us to choose what methods to generate. We get two choices, or you know, two possibilities. We get the um, return a data table, which actually, uh, you know, this uh, gives us a new data table filled with the results of our query. So we make the query in our code, and then this uh, whatever this method ends up being will give us the results of that, which we can then put in our application. So we always want one of those. And then we also have a, a fill a data table thing right here, which uh, takes a data table or data set and actually executes the uh, SQL statement, um, which we also want. So we, we want both of these, right? We want to uh, be able to fill the data table and also return the data table. Uh, and what we'll do here, every single time you do something like this, right? You want to change this method name because, you know, you see this query over here, fill and get data, right? Um, these, this method name needs to be unique to this query. So I couldn't call this one fill and get data. But if we had multiple queries for the same table adapter that was are that were all showing um different you know the results of different queries maybe different uh fields were being shown or different records or the search was happening in a different way or the order was happening in a different way or something like that right um we we don't want repeats like this we want to make sure that these method names are unique always so in this case i'll uh, add the word year to the end of both of these so we have the method names fill by year and get data by year which is really important that they are unique. I, I really want to specify that. But the, the nice thing about using the word year right here, fill by year and get data by year right here, is that we're associating these names with the parameter query called year. Or, or you know, the, the field year and the parameter query called year. The uh, get data by year and the fill by year kind of has that implication of we're using the year as like our determination of whether or not we are uh, getting that data, uh, getting that s s particular set of data from there. And most of the time you'll be using like parameter queries with this, right? Um, so if we were doing the, um, like another example, right, where you could specify year one and year two or year starting year end, I could do year start year end in this method name or something like that. So. Yeah, it's really important to use the method names right here to identify what parameter query you're using in order to actually uh, make that query work. All right, so once you have done all of that, um, you can click Next, and it, this shows the results. It generated the select statement, which is good. Um, it was able to make the query, and then it made the two methods for our table adapter like this. So that's awesome. We can apply the settings to the query itself. We can hit Finish. And this gives us our second query. So both queries are still there. We can show off the full table if we want, or we can show off this um, this query where we have this fill by year thing, get data by year thing, which is going to be super helpful. So, and then of course, you know, make sure you save it. All right, so now we are at our application. What we have is our table. Um, which is actually going to hold all of the data. So we have we have this data grid view object that we talked a lot about previously, but it, it is a table that is going to hold uh, the results of the query that we make. And the display button is going to control which query we're using. Specifically, what we have to do is we have to use the um, the fill methods that we have right here, either fill or fill by year, in order to fill this particular table with whatever data is actually you know that we are actually interested in so that's what fill does is we take a table like this and we fill it with data as opposed to get which would allow us to get the data from a table like we could get whatever is in here you know we fill this with whatever the data from whatever year that we choose and then we get everything from this table 
and then we go through and actually work with the data. That's the difference between the fill and the get that we just made. So get data by year would get the year thing and the fill by year would get the, um, yeah, it would fill it with stuff. So that's what we have going on. Actually, I, I apologize. Get data by year uh, wouldn't, you know, you don't fill the table and then get from that filled in data. I apologize. You, you get from the, uh, like the whole data set, you, you get by year, you, you get according to the um, select statement that we just made. That's uh, a misspeak there. But yeah, so that is what we're going to do is we're going to use our display button based on the uh, all or year radio buttons there. We're going to choose which, um, we're going to choose which actual, uh, query to use in order to fill this table. Now you'll see right here, um, we talked about this before last chapter, but down here we have this winners table adapter dot fill method in the load uh, event handler, right? So this fill, this is the default query that we actually um, use to fill out the table with its initial data. And if I actually start the application again, um, that's what we see is all of the data from the table set, uh, the data set being used to fill everything in like that. Now we couldn't actually use, um, fill, we couldn't actually use fill by year down here because, uh, unless we pass in a parameter or something like that, but, um, like we could pass in a parameter and, and give an initial year, but that would be a little bit awkward. And if we're doing it during the load like this, we wouldn't have a an opportunity to get that data from the user or anything. We'd have to fill it in with like a default value, which is, I don't know, maybe there are times where it would be helpful for your particular applications. It is a possibility, but uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. All right, and here is the um, code that actually makes it all work. So we have this check to see if rad all is checked, rad all being this, um, radio button that uh, you know, handles, uh, asks to display the entire table. Uh, if that is checked, then you just use this same statement that is down here, actually. You uh, winners table adapter dot fill, and then you pass in the actual table that you're working with, which is the name of your data, your data set, uh, period, the name of your table like that. So table adapter name, uh, dot fill, um, data set name, dot table name. That's what you put right there. Otherwise, you know, else if red all is not checked, then it must be that year is checked by the nature of radio buttons. So we now check if the uh, year is empty, um, if the year isn't empty, if the user, uh, forgot to put something into the year before they hit display. Uh, so that would be checking year and then hitting display, but not typing anything in. If they didn't, uh, message, message box shows up. We know how all that works. Else, if they did put something in, then you try parse it. Uh, if, if it's not numeric, we're not worrying about it. We'll, we'll just pass in the number zero that would result from this try parse in. We'll just pass it into the query and then we'll get an empty result which would be a sign of something went wrong although you could give a message box if you wanted to tell the user that they need to give a valid year or that they need to um you know that either they need to give a numeric value for year which you could test for by saying if this is false if not that um you know message box needs to be a number otherwise you know check to see if anything got returned from there whatever uh we won't worry about that so there we go um regardless what happens after that is we have a winner's table adapter dot fill by year uh, Oscar's data set dot winner sort of 
as normal except for the fact that we're using fill by year but then we also have to pass in an argument for our parameter query so we have to pass in the year into fill by year um and that's actually how we go about doing that uh, is you pass in all the parameters for the query as parameters for fill by year and then fill by year will take all these uh, parameters that you pass in and shove them into the query in the order that you pass them in so that's how you would go about doing that. Um, let's see how it looks when we run it. So this uh, is the default display when you fill in everything down at this uh, line in the load event handler. Um, if I wanted to look at the year 2009, I would select year 2009 like this. And that gives, uh, yeah the data for the year 2009 but then go to 2015 uh, we see the data for 2015 and so on and so forth if i go back up to all then it will display everything it doesn't even care about what's in the text box right here in fact we don't even see it reference the text box in this branch of the if statement so that is what's going on with this program that's how we take a query we actually build up a query from a table selecting all the fields and using where to differentiate what records we want, using order to sort everything if we so choose to do that, and then also using parameter queries, but then saving it, actually uh, creating the fill and get methods for our table adapter to use. And remember, it is the table adapter that's using these. Um, and it's working with the data set. But then once we actually have those methods created and we're working with the data set, then you know, that's how we can integrate it in with our application using controls that we've been using this whole semester. But, you know, we're passing that data in and um, we're passing data from the application into our code and then passing that from the code into the actual query in order to change what's actually being displayed using our fill method that we created for our query. So. That's the whole procedure right there. All right, so I know that was a bit of a long one, um, but we have all these concepts about how to create queries and then uh, all the different types of queries you can create and how to add them into your application and all that. I felt like it um, kind of flowed a lot nicer to have everything in the same video after, you know, we have the video talking about the select statement that you could cross-reference separately from this video without having to scrub between areas at the beginning and areas at the end, right? But then um, this video, it just made sense to kind of do everything all at once to me. So that's why I ended up going about it that way. But yeah, that's the process of getting a custom SQL query into your actual application and using that to modify your databases. Uh, the last thing we're going to do for this chapter is show off how to do some neat things with calculations in the fields like in, in the actual queries themselves i should say so look forward to that